Okay, I'm going to talk about this case study of a metro station in which uh, FDS was used to come up with a smoke ventilation strategy. Uh, this is a retrofit job. Uh, the uh, metro line has been existing for 30, 40 years, uh, but the initial ventilation system was not designed to uh, take care of uh, smoke ventilation. It was only for physiological requirements. So there were a lot of constraints, so th they make the project more interesting. So I'm going to talk about those. These are the uh, presentations topics that I'm going to cover. So this was the layout. It was the entrance was uh, entrance. There are four entrances on the four corners of the platform. Uh, it's an island type uh, layout in which there is one platform in the middle and there are two tracks on the side. And how are they connected to the tunnels is the, there is a tunnel connecting like this and this is the station. So these are like parameters of these of this particular station. This Most of the stations in this line, there are around 18 stations in the metro line and 15 of them were of the same design with having typically a constant distance between two stations. So uh, one model was taken which was a replica or typical uh, design for all the stations. So these were the data related to the design. So the ventilation system that was existing was like this. There was, uh, there, uh, was a mid-tunnel exhaust uh, running at 80 CMS. Uh, there was this under-platform exhaust running at 50 CMS. And there was a air-conditioned air supply at 120 CMS uh, through the fall ceiling and ducted supply coming from air handling unit. Uh, so if I draw a schematic, this how the uh, model was. So this was the CFD model chosen for the uh, for the uh, for the project. Uh, we had modeled the station and along with that half tunnel on each side to represent the complete system. Uh, first of all, using Fluent, we did the path line and temperature simulation inside the of the existing ventilation and cooling system to see uh, how the flow is inside inside the uh, station and the tunnel. Then uh, for the emergency ventilation system as per NFPA 130, uh, these were the data taken. Uh, five, uh, design fire was taken from a experimental data available through a German, German paper on enclosed wagon fire curve. So this was a 15 megawatt fire peaking uh, having a flash over at about five minutes. After five minutes, there was a flash over, and uh, the peak arrived at around 20 minutes time. So we uh, tried various cases. In the first case, we uh, installed, proposed to install the overtrack exhaust, which is installed over the uh, uh, railway track, and uh, uh, of 80 CMS of certain quantity and the uh, air conditioning inlets uh, were supplying the fresh air and remaining 20 CMS was coming from natural openings. So in this model, if we see this is the station, this is the source of the fire. Uh, this red are the red dots, small red dots are the exhaust points and the green dots are the supply points in the system. So uh, as we saw, uh, smoke in this case, although uh, the ventilation system was reasonably sufficient, but smoke reached to human height uh, and made evacuation difficult, uh, reached human height within like uh, five, less than five, five minutes. And uh, uh, this was not a successful design. So then we did tried another design with uh, similar overtrack exhaust, but not supplying uh, the air from the air conditioning supply, but taking all from a dedicated shaft and uh, from the uh, ramps and station intakes, natural intakes. And in this case, uh, this was more or less 
similar uh, behavior. More or less similar behavior with uh, visibility slightly better in this area. Uh, these are the fire exits close to the fire exit. So uh, visibility close to the fire exit was better, but still uh, it was uh, very dark and uh, the evacuation time was still very large. Then similarly, we tried to increase the overtrack exhaust capacity and uh, try to model that uh, with the uh, only one side of exhaust, overtrack exhaust working and the other side not working to make it more effective. And in this case, this was slightly better in the sense that uh, smoke uh, kind of collected it between the two uh, fire exits. But this, the area where the smoke collected was the dense, most dense part of the platform, and most of the people will be in this area. Although they would tend to, they would ha not have enough time to uh, this, and this was filled within two minutes of the start of the fire, 15 megawatt fire. So they'll not have enough time to evacuate to the fire exits here and here. So this was also not uh, working. So similarly, we like tried various cases I'll straight away. Uh, in the ninth case, uh, obviously in a logical manner, we tried to improve at each stage some ventilation improvement and some smoke behavior we saw improving in each case. Eventually in the ninth case, uh, in which uh, an overtrack exhaust of uh, 80 CMS and under platform supply of 60 CMS was provided, uh, there was an under platform um, exhaust already existing in the system. Uh, this was to evacuate the smoke oh, to the heat generated from the braking at the station. When the train comes, it breaks, it generates some uh, heat due to friction. So evacuate that smoke. There was an under platform exhaust system that was uh, existing. So we put a reversible fan on that same line and changed that ducting to uh, smoke rated ducting. And uh, this, in this system, the smoke behavior was much better. There was a, a smoke reservoir which was uh, smoke reservoirs created naturally above the height of the platform and visibility was maintained good at the human height of the, at the human height. This will be more clear in this view. Uh, as you can see, the, this is about 2.8 meters height, above 2.8 meter from the ground was the uh, smoke layer height and uh, below that the visibility was quite good. Apart from this area right in the corner, which was not really of that much concern because anyway, not many people will be there and they will tend to uh, run here very quickly. So, and the smoke, uh, it took about 10 minutes uh, to reach uh, smoke here. So this was a good design and finally implemented in, in the metro. And this uh, was the visibility that was uh, after 19 minutes uh, when the fire is at peak, this is the visibility at 1.8 meter from ground. Most of the area visibility is more than 10 meter. And only in the uh, platform, this corner area and near the fire, the visibility is less. So, uh, and this fire exits, these are the two fire exits where the visibility was good so people could run away. And the temperature uh, was also mostly high temperatures were close to the ceiling and in the occupied zone. Uh, the temperature was not so unfavorable. So, uh, and uh, this was for station. Then we uh, did a similar uh, study for the uh, tunnel. And tunnel was actually much easier. Thankfully, we got the solution in the second iteration itself. The project deadline was also coming close, so it was lucky. Uh, this was the first case we tried and it didn't work out. Uh, the whole of the tunnel was getting filled with the smoke. Uh, in this, we were trying to exhaust smoke through overtrack exhaust uh, installed on the 
platform side and it was not a good idea anyway to have the smoke coming on the station side. So uh, there was an already existing uh, fan in the mid tunnel exhaust which was of uh, double the capacity of the existing fan of 160 CMS. It was not fire rated but uh, uh, there was a uh, space to put that fan. So we suggested this, uh, we tried this uh, 180 CMS, 160 CMS, it's a high cap, very high capacity fan. So all the smoke was then going f towards the mid tunnel exhaust and people could uh, exit from the back, from the back door of the uh, rail uh, of the train to towards the station and there were signages provided to uh, guide the occupants to that direction. So this was the finalized uh, emergency ventilation system designed using FDS and CFD simulations. Uh, in case of a station fire, this is how the system will work. The key is that under platform exhaust will uh, be reversed and supply will be provided and over track exhaust uh, will be installed of the required capacity. And in case of a tunnel fire, mid tunnel exhaust will provide the required ventilation. So these are the components installed in the retrofit job. Uh, over track exhaust under platform supply which was uh, a reversible fan uh, with MCA certification, smoke sensors and PLC controller and smoke duds to make sure. That's it. Thank you. Any questions? Are there any questions? In the back. Probably guess what I'm going to ask. How did you choose your grid resolution? What was the grid resolution? How did you choose your grid resolution? Uh, we did the mesh convergence. We tried with a coarser mesh in the beginning and then we went down to see where the mesh convergence is happening. All right, thank you very much. All right, thanks a lot.